going on guys welcome back just out here in the garage got a few of my cats and actually need to redo the deck bracing on the decepticon but i wanted to talk a little bit about inlays and reinforcements i know with pro boats that's kind of a hot topic because they do like to split the seams especially the geico and the decepticon is clean as a whistle turned out beautiful if you shove your whole head in there you can get a little something cooking you can smell a little something but it's not like stinking up the garage i actually brought it back inside so that boat's good escs are getting worked on to be sent my way and they will be castle escs i've got a rudder new rudder coming today i'm going to put in the new servo with the old motors that boat's going to be good to go so I figured these three boats would show different levels of reinforcement. So as much as I love doing inlays, uh, they look cool. They, they, they look cool. They're awesome. They reinforce the boat. This boat has a full inlay minus the motor mounts, which are kind of in there. But it's not always necessary. So on this boat, I decided to do a full inlay. But the floor itself doesn't really need the inlay as much as the seams do. So running the inlay up the sides and around the top, like this inlay actually runs to about here. So if you've got the seam, kind of the belt line here, you know, you're doing the inlay mostly for looks. And then the real benefit is covering up this seam. So the seam is stronger, right? So on a boat like this, like on my Cheetah, it came with the inlay and I chose to use, this is something that you might actually be able to do on a Geico or a Velez, but this is fiberglass seam tape. So it's, this is three inch wide fiberglass tape. It's lightweight. It's pre-cut. It comes in a roll. And so this is what I would use for seam reinforcement. So you can do a full inlay if you want, if you think that the floor is a weak area. But if it's really just the seams you're going after, all you have to do is run this seam tape along the sides of the boat. So that's actually, the Cheetah comes with this carbon Kevlar inlay. And by the way, carbon Kevlar is super strong, super cool, very difficult to work with because as soon as you start to want to sand it, it'll just kind of fray it's super messy, so I'll tend to use carbon fiber for my material of choice. But if I can get you guys in here, so right here, this line here, this is where that seam tape starts. So it goes from here, it wraps all the way up in the deck, and that adds a ton of uh, rigidity to this seam here so that you're not busting a seam open. So you kind of have to weigh your options you know this decepticon for example came with the inlay it came with seam reinforcement this is probably one of the best layups i've actually seen in a hull as far as just being built really strong and not overly heavy i was actually really pleasantly surprised so one thing i learned from building pearls in wooden boats is that you can get an immense amount of strength by having bracing, right? So not just relying on seam tape or an inlay, but actually building in some bracing. So I wanted to show you guys a few ways to do that. On the Decepticon, because it's a twin, I was able to use these motor mounts to wrap into the top deck to add a ton of bracing, as well as the brace up front. But I wanted to show you guys on the Geico, for example, I used an old battery tray and that works amazing because it's already lightened up. It's got holes in it. On my Cheetah, on the other hand, I didn't bother lightening it. It was super short. And so if you can see, I just used a piece of carbon fiber. Now you can also do this by packing the front with foam. That will work. That will help compression. So it'll, it'll still have some give. The nice thing about a brace, right, that is actually epoxied in, is that 
now the top and bottom, the, the deck and the tunnel are actually fused together. So now not only are you going to resist compression, right? Now is it not only going to come, it's not going to compress, but now you're going to resist any kind of torsion or twist, right? So if you think about like a race car or something, it's all about bracing and stiffness and rigidity. And so deck braces are super simple way to do that. And it just so happens that when you reduce that compression, you also tend to not blow out your seams. So the long and short of it is, on a Geico, on a Pro Boat product, I'd probably just do seam tape all the way as far to the end as you can. I would pour the tips with epoxy and chopped carbon fiber. That's been done to all three of these boats, right? Because you could imagine if the seam splits anywhere in here, you're probably going to be okay. If you blow out your entire front seam up here in the tips, that's much harder to get up to, right? So by pouring the tips, and again, not a ton, you're only going to maybe here, you're going to try and get it along this line, and you're going to try and get it along this line. And just by doing that, again, the front end will resist, resist, twist, it will not blow apart the seam, and you'll never find yourself having to deal with something like that. So I do want to show you guys some different epoxies and stuff, because I'm going to be putting that deck brace back in. I'll give you guys a little close up here. This is the, the old Bratwurst, as I call it. That's a 4070 TP on an X8S with the cheapo servo, battery trays in the back, front is full of foam. Geico single over here, as you can see, it's all been reworked, all of the old uh, electronics tray ripped out, new rails, it's got a 160 in it. Motor's out, motor's gonna go back in. Very cool boat, single motor, fully blueprinted, Decepticon, you guys have seen a lot of lately. I will show you the bottom of this Geico because these Pro Boat bottoms, I'll show you, uh, they really need some work and some love. And so you guys can see here, right? These middle pads were super low. The boat had some rock. See what I've done here. Custom water pickups. The original location was here, which was not in the water as much. So these are custom water pickups. And then from here, here's the water exits where we're dumping. You can see this middle edge was super low. This whole pad was low. These middles were really low. And now the thing is just perfect. It's dialed. Cheetah, same thing. Full blueprint job. I would have loved to have painted the bottom all black. I think like this, the black and the green. Uh, there's like a Lamborghini boat that's got something similar to that. But anyway, I'm just rambling now. I'll show you guys some epoxy stuff, how we're going to fix that front brace. And hopefully this gives you some ideas on how to not be dogmatic. You know, don't just assume every boat needs the same thing. Try and keep it light, keep it fast. And yeah, just do what you think the boat needs or what they're known to have issues with. So let's, uh, let's get into some epoxy stuff real quick. All right, I'll keep this part quick. I know I have a tendency to ramble. I just, I love this stuff, you guys. I'm really just, I geek out over this stuff. I'm a complete nerd when it comes to it. So, so when you make and cut your front deck brace, right, if you cut it just, you want to sand it just perfect so that it will kind of hold itself in place, right, so you're not fighting it. But basically, once you get it in there, you'll need to, you'll need to square it up. Right, so you can use like one of these machinist one, two, three blocks. You can put it here, right, and that'll kind of set it square. So you want to make sure it's square. You don't want the deck brace off one direction or the other, so you can measure it. Fortunately, because this one ripped out, I'll have a, a line where it was, so I'll just put it exactly where it was. And uh, as far as epoxy, some things that might come in handy. This is West Systems G-Flex. This is 
what I use for all motor mounts, uh, servo mounts. This stuff will resist vibration. So incredibly strong, will resist vibration. Also has a very long working time, which can be either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on if you're trying to make something perfect. But it's very hard to sand. So I try and save this stuff strictly for the motor mounts. On something like a deck brace, there's not really any force that's ever going to be pulling it out, right? The only force on this thing is really the compression, maybe a little bit of twist. Or in my case, a Raider 150 that tries to blow the top off and pull it this way, right? But that's never going to happen otherwise. So not going to use G-Flex. Up here, I've got 5 minute, uh, I think 5, 15, 30 minutes. And the general rule for epoxy is the longer the cure time, the stronger it's going to be. So I'll use five minute or I'll use CA glue when working with this stuff just to tack it in place. Once it's tacked in place to get these nice pretty beads, right? I use tape. I'm going to tape it off and not going to do that this second, but tape it off. You can use gravity to help you, right? Clean it up, Q-tip, alcohol. You guys kind of probably know the drill with all of that. But as far as epoxy, yes, get this stuff for motor mounts. Prep the surface well, sand the surface well beforehand, clean it with alcohol. And then as far as cure times, just keep in mind the longer the cure time, the better off, the stronger it's going to be. You can get uh, mixing cups, you can get stir sticks, popsicle sticks. Those also make great shims. Also, one of these tiny little scales. I have one around here somewhere. Tiny little scale for measuring epoxy if you want to get it like perfect, if you want to get all the amounts just perfect. And I'll probably do this in a minute and I'll film it all for you guys, but the the basic gist of it is you want to tack things in place first and then go back and do the final final bead of epoxy also use some black this is black this is black epoxy dye and again you, you don't have to make your boats pretty you don't have to spend that extra time but if you're going to do it why not do it right why not use black epoxy for everything everywhere right black epoxy uh, it blends into carbon fiber. It looks clean, and you can have a boat that you're proud of, right? Because let's be honest, 95% of these times, 95% of the time, the boats aren't running. They're sitting in your room, in your garage. They're kind of like art pieces. I mean, you, you want to be proud of it, right? You want it to look good. So a drop of black dye will go a long way. You can use red dye you can use green dye powder right you see where i'm going with this if you get a big nick in your boat you can actually color epoxy to match the boat and touch it up i've done that on the geico i did that on the cheetah that's why i've got green and red so you can use epoxy as like a paint filler to do paint work if you if you bust uh, the tip right if you chip the tip of your boat which I think I had on the cheetah. You can use red epoxy and you'll never see it. It's amazing. These are glass microspheres, which are used for thickening. So anytime you want thicker epoxy, keep in mind, thickening and dyeing epoxy technically weakens it. But again, you're using a, a drop of dye. You're only thickening when you have epoxy that you need to stay somewhere. So if you can use gravity to, to put the epoxy where you want, you can do that. But in a case like this, like let me show you these motor mounts, for example, right? These have epoxy all the way down, all the way up the sides, all the way up the top, or even, even the, the black epoxy around there or around there. So if you need it to stay somewhere and you can't use gravity, you have to thicken it up. So these microspheres are super lightweight, those work and yeah, get you some Bob Smiths. This stuff is cheap off Amazon and some stir sticks. If you want some of those little mixing cups are disposable. They're probably like five cents each. 
you get a hundred pack of them and you can even get the little stir sticks if i can grab them for you guys sorry okay these are the the little stir sticks and i need to get you guys some links but these little stir sticks come in handy for doing you know you can run it along these lines to get like a really clean bead and last thing i will say about epoxy because i've already drugged this on way too long is don't go overboard you know good prep is key but it kills me when I see boats with like gobs of epoxy everywhere, right? Or like, um, yeah, it's just not needed, guys. You know, a, a thin, a, a well-placed bead, you know, you don't need gobs of epoxy. Most of the time, you're really just adding weight. Battery trays, I will use clear silicone. Anytime I need to seal something, anytime I need to seal up holes in the back, Anytime I need to do battery trays, clear silicone is very forgiving. It's incredibly strong. It is removable if you need to remove it. And it has the ability to kind of withstand some vibration. So it's not too rigid. And so battery trays, clear silicone, everything else mostly gets like 30 minute Bob Smith's epoxy dyed black. If it's a motor mount, it's getting G-Flex, something that can resist a lot of vibration. And anything else that needs to be sealed, clear silicone. Not like the E6000, nothing that's going to be permanent for that kind of stuff. Also use G-Flex for these, just because these are going to see some vibration. And yeah, I think that's the rundown on epoxy. I can show you guys how I'm going to prep this and prep it, sand it. But again, just notice, right? Like I'm doing really, really thin lines here, right? Because if it's not something that's going to have a ton of torque and force put on it, right? Keep it clean. Keep it light. You know, that's why there's a hole that I cut out of the middle. Just because don't need it. Save the weight. A lighter boat's a faster boat, stronger boat. And this hull is actually surprisingly light. And then because it's got the bracing in it, right, at three points, it's incredibly stiff. I trust this thing in a flip at 75, 80, not really too worried about it. So anyway, I think that that's a quick rundown. If you guys have any questions, let me know on how I do things. If there's something I need to do different or change, also let me know. Hope you guys are having a great week and we'll see you guys on the next one.